Right. Okay, so I think we are live now. I'm just checking all my screens here. And let's quit Spotify for now. That was one of my tracks. So this is actually a my first test of my new live streaming setup. Which is crazy. I will I will let you know what it is and we will try out how everything works. It looks as if I have good audio levels because I have an audio mixer here as well. Uh, and uh, let's hang out in the chat, everyone. So let's start chatting. Okay, so um, how is the audio level on your side, everyone? It looks it is in the upper yellow here, closing to red. Not too hot, uh, I hope. So uh, let me explain my live streaming setup now. I have two cameras, so this one that you are watching now, then I have another one here, and then I have a hardware live streaming uh, switcher. So I can switch to this camera over here, right there to this camera over here, and now let's test this. I hope it will work. If I press four here, you will be able to see the this monitor. Yeah, I'm actually looking at the preview monitor here so I can see everything going out live at the same time. So uh, we don't have any particular topic for this live stream. I haven't live streamed for over a year, I think. And, uh, well, I built up the new setup and the courage to really take things to the next level because I want to be able to live stream live uh, music composition, sound design, trying out new plugins and libraries and everything. Uh, DJ B. Murda, welcome. How to uninstall plugins in Logic Pro? Well, uh, this is not going to be a tutorial stream, it's more going to be a hangout and chat. Um, but I think I have some, some videos on that on my live stream. Let's see. It's so hard to keep up with everything here because I have my screen here, my camera monitor there, my camera monitor there, the live streaming output, multi-view monitor there, the hard, hardware box here for the live streaming the actual interface on YouTube for going live. It's crazy, so bear with me, my friends. It will be... It will be a, li uh, a while till I... Oh, let me try this one here. If I press on here, you should be able to see me in the upper right corner of the screen uh, at the same time. Well, I, I will just start by playing a short little composition I made to try out if you, if you can hear everything all right. So the audio comparing to my voice level. So it sounds like this. Some chill out. How's the audio? Yeah, you can see me, great. So I'm trying to calibrate the audio levels compared to my microphone. Music a bit, a bit too quiet, so I should probably boost this a bit. Uh, sounds good, yeah. Uh, it's tricky to, to get the audio levels right or at the decent level, because some tracks are very compressed. This one was obviously not, but if I just compare that to one... Let's let's try one of my mastered Spotify tracks again here. Um, let's see. So, so that if we take this one... I will just fast forward so we get into the more compressed parts. Okay, it's still a bit too low. Something like that. It's almost hitting red now. Okay, so I, I, I was just going to try to see 
on my audio levels where I should place the actual audio. I mean, now I put it at right below red from that compressed mastered version, but if I now start to play piano at the same output... Can you still hear it all right? Because that it's not compressed or anything, it's just the... Let's see what I'm using here. Uh, addictive keys. Where's the sustain pedal? Where did you go? Sustain pedals always, always escape me. Okay, so I'm, there I'm in the green zone for the audio now. It looks like it's matching okay. Why am, I, why am I getting this warning on the YouTube Live? The stream current bitrate is lower than the recommended bitrate. I have like 100 megabit up speed, so it shouldn't be a problem. Oops, wrong key. Okay, so it looks uh, as it is working. I will try to... Because the great thing about this live streaming box is that it takes away the CPU power, uh, or it frees up the CPU power, rather, on the computer. Because I am actually sending the HDMI output from my iMac into this box, and this is the box that is actually encoding the stream and sends it live to YouTube. So um, that way, if I, if I use OBS and start to do something in Logic, for example, it actually takes quite a bit of CPU power. So now I can, I hope, still use the DAW uh, without taking the CPU for the live stream, because if in case you haven't tried live streaming, music composition work, um, it's very heavy on the CPU, and this iMac is from late 2013, I think. So it, I'm, I will be needing an upgrade. What computer do you guys use, by the way? Or, and, uh, and what DAW? Hey, Daniel Gibson. Ba Bahamas. Bahamas? Bah how do you pronounce that? Welcome to the stream. So, uh, from, as from the title, you can see this is my new live streaming setup. So I haven't live streamed in uh, over a year. Uh, and I only did a couple of live streams back then. So, Andy, Cubase on PC. Windows 7? How long is Windows 7 going to be working? I thought they pushed everyone to, to Windows uh, 10 now. Uh, another iMac and Logic Pro user, I see. Okay, so um, Logic Pro, MacBook Logic Pro. How is how how is working on a a MacBook or laptop working for you guys? Because I don't know, I have been so used to working on dual 27-inch screens. Um, so, I, I mean, do you add another screen to the laptop? Because I couldn't work unless I have massive screen estate. Lots of MacBook users. Okay. So, one thing I wanted to uh, discuss, actually, is if I go to YouTube here, and let's uh, check this out. I don't know if you guys saw my video, like, uh, three or four months ago, where I was pretty tired on the YouTube grind. By the way, I'm soon celebrating, or I, perhaps I already celebrate, my 10... 10 year anniversary being a YouTuber on this platform. So, 
uh, I felt pretty much exhausted because of all the thousands of hours of hard work and I still don't even make like a quarter of minimum wa wage from the ad income. It's like crazy. So uh, I'm looking to find the types of videos that can get viral. Like I, I checked Alex Mukala. I assume many of you have seen his YouTube channel. And then I sorted it on the most popular. And then I saw these types of videos here were his uh, most watched videos by far, like 607,000 views, over 700,000 views in less than a year. Which is why I tried doing a similar thing here for levels of core progressions. Four levels. I, it was actually inspired by Alex. Uh, I don't know if the YouTube algorithm will pick this up because I have tried for 10 years and I still don't know how it works. I mean, Alex seemed to have nailed the algorithm because he made another YouTube channel uh, not too long ago where he does like music reaction and uh, quick analysis videos um, of popular video game soundtracks. Um, and as you can see, he, he gets like 700,000, 300,000. I mean, most of these are over 100,000 views. So perhaps that's something I should do, reaction videos. I, I, I want to find videos that can get over 100,000 views, which is not super much compared to the top YouTubers. But I mean, right now, of, after 10 years, I still get around 1,000 views or so on most, practically all of my videos. Um, okay, so let's check, check the chat here. Daniel, it's fine for me, I've never used Logic on a big screen. But once you do, I mean, you will never go back. That, was, that is how it was for me anyway, because I'm even contemplating adding a, a third screen up here. Well, you can't see where I'm, so I have two, my two monitors there and there, and then I want to have another one on top where I can have like visuals, video, playback, and so on. Um, perhaps even setting up a third screen on my screen sets so I can have the mixer up and the sequencer and the piano roll editor at the same time to save time. Hello, MIDI man. Uh, let's see, I'm also trying to find out how does the YouTube live chat work? So... I guess some of the tricks to use are using clickbait in the titles, the secrets of... Yeah, yeah that's what I tried, but I mean... Uh, seven secrets on writing epic percussion. Still only... 1,000 views or so. Uh, I'm also trying to add my um, my uh, face cut out, like, like cut out in Photoshop or Affinity Photo that I use. All kinds of tricks that I have been inspired by the top YouTubers like Alex Mukala. Um, he's the only one I know that gets these kinds of views, like 100,000 plus views on a composer channel. If you guys know any other I can get inspiration from, let me know, because I don't I don't know. The YouTube algorithm it's crazy, it's hard to uh get uh you know working for me. What inspired you to get into music? Oh I don't even know if I ever thought about anything else and uh, because it's like why not do music? It's like the, it's like I go and hum melodies all day long, driving people crazy. That's how much I am into music. Um, if you're talking about cinematic and soundtrack music in particular, I guess um, it started in the mid '90s. I was born in 1981, by the way, when I watched The Lion King. And uh, which was actually scored by Hans Zimmer, who is more known for these hybrid epic tracks now, but that has such a beautiful soundtrack with the choirs and the woodwinds, crescendos and everything. 
uh, from that day, I wanted to be able to do music like that in that um, niche. Let's see, Daniel Gibson Music. Do you HMI from your Mac to a screen? How does it work? So I, uh, yeah, I have the Display Port or Thunderbolt One. I don't know if there's a difference. Then I connected that to a a dongle. It's the Apple world. You need dongles, sadly. So you have I have a dongle from the Display Port to the HDMI, and then that goes into Dell Ultra Sharp screen here. Um, I don't know if I can even use an, a third screen on my old iMac. I'm going to invest, after all these years, into a new Mac. Um, I'm still waiting for the upcoming, what it's, is it like iMac 30 inch or something, that new one with a new CPU, which seems to be, from the rumors, that should be an amazing machine. The weather is bad, as it mainly is in this time of year in Sweden. It's boring. It's like grey skies and everything. Which is why I guess I'm always inside here in my studio. <laughs> okay, so let's see. Um, MacBook, did, did, did I miss something here? Collaborations might work. Yeah, perhaps you do. Try to ask Alex. Um, if he's open to collaborations. I think collaborations worked better in the old days of YouTube. I mean, when I started YouTube in 2000, early 2011, I think it was February, actually. It was a totally different platform. Now, I mean, it seems you have to be able to entertain and keep the entertainment going throughout the entire videos because people have such short attention spans so if you drag on and on on something they just click out so uh midi band no i don't use pro tools that's one of the few DAWs, DAWs i never tried I used Cubase for eight years, Reason for like 10 years, um, both uh, in tandem with the Rewire for a while. I also tried uh, Studio One a bit. Uh, that was a really nice DAW actually. But uh, the, what else? Reaper. Um, something else. I, th I think I even tested Cakewalk, Sonar. But not Pro Tools. So... Uh, yeah, not Pro Tools, but, but when I found Logic in 2014, I switched to Mac only because Logic was so amazing to me. That was by far my fo most favorite DAW, so I switched to Mac. Then I found out that I loved their video editor, Final Cut Pro, and the ScreenFlow screencasting software, Affinity Photo instead of Photoshop. So I'm on the Apple... Uh, side of things because I love that software so much more. I have become so much faster in my workflow. It simply works in the way my mind works, I guess. On the subject of monitors, why do some composers have their monitors placed a bit low? Well, to be honest, my studio, my monitors are crappy set up because I cannot fit them any other way. <laughs> because this room is two by three meters which is like what's that six by nine feet it's like a closet and i have an entire music production studio and video production studio in this setup it's cramped so i have no other way <laughs> um you used cubase and dumped it for reaper so reaper the best thing about reaper is that it was uh, when i tried it out so cpu friendly but I didn't like the workflow for me uh, that uh, compared to Logic, so I just went with Logic. But whatever DW you use, you should find one that suits your workflow and that you really love using, you feel inspired by. Then uh, simply take the time to learn and really master the DW because that is the main tool you will use for creating music. 
So that's what I did. That's why I went all in and then I started teaching what I've learned on my YouTube channel, shared my video tips and tricks and secrets and hidden gems in Logic, um, which actually worked quite nicely to build my channel, but I want to take it now to the next level, so I need to find videos that have broader appeal and can get like this, Alex Mukula, 600,000 views, 500,000 views. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Sarah Productions, I think collabs do help most times as we take Alex. Uh, yeah, he has, oh, I don't know if his music channel has 220,000. So this actually proves a point. He had his tutorial channel since 2015. It has 120,000 subscribers. He had this channel only since 2019. So only two years compared to six years. And it's double. Doesn't that prove my point? That is, which is that this channel is way more entertaining than his tutorial channel. And it seems that YouTube favors entertainment by far. By far. I mean, if you, if you check out like a tutorial on how to... I think I searched for this, like how to uh, write ostinato strings. And the top three videos had like 1,000 to 2,000 views. Even if you rank on the top of YouTube, because it's, it's such a tiny topic compared to where people find this thumbnail in the uh, home feed. They just click it because it, it's fun to watch. That's how I speculate it works. So, um, I mean, that's what I ha have been thinking, like, should I just, if I can't find a way to get 100,000 views, I should just focus on making courses, because that's, I don't, I can't sustain uh, my life with my YouTube channel after 10 years, not even a quarter of minimum wage. So I, 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 if I can find a way to get to Alex Mukulov's level, then I could continue keep making free videos. But otherwise, I guess I just have to push more uh, courses because that uh, you need so many views on YouTube to get any decent money. Oh, thanks, Midi Man. Uh, where are you guys from, by the way? Want to get a feel for where are you guys? I saw Bahamas in the beginning. That's like, uh, I'm so bad at geography. That's like so southern of the US United States, right? Or perhaps I'm completely wrong. New York. I actually been to New York once in 2005. Um, it was a... I wonder how it is in New York now, because back then, I mean, I remember, you know, 9-11, um, crazy time. And when I was there in 2005, they still had, like, military personnel guarding, like, the Empire State Building. In the middle of Times Square, there were two, at least on one occasion, and the uh, Statue of Liberty. It felt so wrong, like military weapons and outfits guarding in the United States. I hope it has calmed down since then. Let's see, Germany. Cool, uh, NM USA. Don't know what NM stands for, probably states. I cannot name like all the states uh, in the United States. They have a memorial now for 9-11. Uh, I think I saw, like, uh, then they build, like, a, even higher buildings, like f the Freedom Tower, I think. Uh, I saw some posters that they were planning on building it. Because when I was there in 2005, it was still a crater where uh, the 9-11, but the, you know, the skyscrapers, I don't know, remember the names of them. Uh, World Trade Center, that was it. New Mexico, USA. 
Aha, uh -huh. that's uh, I guess that's New Mexico. That must be close to Mexico, I guess. <laughs> Freedom Tower. Okay, so they built it. Italy. Roberto, aren't you part of of, uh, of the forum f for on my forum for composers? In, if anyone wanted to join, by the way, let's see if I can actually post it in the chat. Will this work to post a link? I think it worked. If anyone wants to join, it's free to connect with me and thousands of fellow composers. Yeah, I remember your name. Louis Vargas. Uh, let's see. Barcelona, Spain. Also people in the warmer climate zones. Uh, no one from Scandinavia yet. Mark Eisenman's 7076 feet for the year 7076, the birth of the USA. Oh, nice one. California. Now that everyone seems to be in the sun, sunny parts of the world, I just look out and see a gray sky mist in the air. Uh, can I get compositions? Can I? Do people give tips there? Yeah, we discuss uh, all all things. Uh, let's see. We have a sub forum for VST and plugins, one for studio and gear, one for composition and production techniques, business and career. Lots of fun stuff. And occasionally we even do composer contests in there. Let's see, how is the stream working on the... Okay, so the program output, it's looking good still. <laughs> Germany is not... Germany is not... No, I guess that's like... It's similar to Sweden, I think. Uh, so do you... Can, can anyone try to post... Do you, can you post links in the chat? I don't know if it's like anti-spam anti or something. If anyone has a YouTube channel, try post it in the chat. And see if you can post a link there. I should probably try to find a way to automate. Like some people have like bots in the chat. What is this? Create highlight video? I don't even know all this stuff. If anyone have experience in YouTube live streams or live streams in general, please feel free to give me any tips here. Because... I'm still new at, at this. Not YouTube, but it works. Uh, yeah, tr I don't see any link yet. If you tried s posting a link, I cannot see it here. On my end, at least. When COVID is over, I'm going back to Italy, Germany, and Sweden. Oh, you're uh, like a globe trotter? like to travel I hate traveling myself I'm by the way I'm I'm it might not seem like it but I'm a true introvert meaning that I can go like for one week without even meeting people I love being by myself I hate meeting people <laughs> which uh, sounds weird because I'm I might f feel extroverted on camera but it I mean I'm used to the camera it's not the same thing in my opinion yeah, Europe is a, a, a usually a nice place. I mean, not in these times. It's pretty crazy. Uh, in some countries, it's worse. Here in Sweden, we have been pretty free still. Um, I mean, the social distancing is one thing I already did extremely well because I, I've been living this social distancing lifestyle like my entire life so that was not a problem for me but it's hard that when you cannot you know meet your um extended family and so on italy yeah i i imagine it is a nice nice country i actually love sweden it's we take things cold i like calm so i don't like big cities i like like the Forests, that's where I... Uh, thanks, Kaltalas. So, let me just play something now. 
I get the urge to play. Sweden is beautiful. Sweden is like a giant forest with some buildings here and there. No, but you but really, we're like 10, 10 million people in a country that's like pff, the size of I don't know, perhaps like Germany, but Germany is like 80 million people, so you can compare. Come to Tuscany if you like forest. Uh Tuscany is Italy, right? I, I, when I think of Italy, I think of like wine fields and open farmlands. Perhaps I'm wrong. Okay, so let's see. Wesley, you, uh, uh, this message is held for review. I will show and try to see. I guess it's a link. What happens? No? Why was that held for review? I have no idea. It's YouTube. Hello, Wesley. I'm uh, I'm not sure why why YouTube. Let's see if I can. It 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 says in the chat like show hide. It holds for review. I don't know if you type too fast, copy pasted in the first post or something. Must be your YouTube spam setting. Is this link coming through MIDI man? No, I don't see a link. I don't see anyone's link, so I, I guess that's like a YouTube feature. Yeah, Wesley, every time you post in the chat now, it comes up like show hide, two buttons. So I have to press show to allow it in the chat. So somehow YouTube thinks you're a bot or something? or. Th I don't know why, and I don't know how to uh, do anything about it. I can't press... Uh, Mike, do you see my link? No. Thanks, Mario. Yeah, I'm happy that my videos have been helpful. Anyone see my link? I don't see anyone's link. Could be my breath. So I can... I don't know. Can anyone see Wesley's comment now? Wesley... Uh, curry two could be my breath because I see it, but then I see uh, two buttons show and hide. So if I press, let's see, now I press it, and now I see. It. Uh, okay, so if anyone have any insights on the YouTube live chat, how it works, please share it with me because I guess I have some setting somewhere that I cannot see. Do you have to be careful? The words you use to many so different uh, ways. I'm I'm not sure what you are referring to. I'm always careful. I never curse. Um, my family is Sicily. Now I can see it. Okay, so uh, it was something about the. Um, Message retracted. Typing. Show immediately here. All in chat live. So I can see your message, Wesley. But I every time you post, I get these two buttons on your... Uh, beside your profile photo. And I need to click show. And since I will be... I should be able to like work at the same time. So I, I will not be able to see the chat all the time. I need to find the settings to just, just let it through automatically good that's michael from from south Te texas uh, great um uh, how far are you on your logic journey how, how much experience do everyone have here in the chat now in music production so i started in 1998 that is when i actually produced my first track i don't have it here otherwise i would have played it because it sucks 
and I, I'm not ashamed that it sucks because everyone sucks at the beginning. Uh, it's seven years. Uh, works fine here. Playing guitar for 40 years. 40 years. Okay. Um, I started trying to learn the guitar, but... I mean, I'm a keyboard player since... All my life, so... Uh, it was hard to, like, get into the mindset of, of playing a guitar. And I basically put it on the shelf because... Time. Time is always the essence. Guitar, 30 years. Wow, you guys have so much experience. I, I assume you guys did the band route, if you have uh, that much experience. At least in the early years. So I will, I will tr do some more tests now with the live streaming setup. If I... Let's see. I should be able to switch here to another camera. Which camera is that? That's camera one. This this will be so hard to learn these buttons. Two, and then I will have to look over there to the second camera. Three is no camera right now, but four is program output. And then I need to press this one here. Let's see what this is. And then I should be able to move this. Oh yeah, so I can move this in a different corner. I haven't figured out a way to, to change. I would I would like to have it a bit larger, but so this is not OBS. This is a hardware live streaming unit. I wonder if I can lock this because when I go back, I still have to turn on the picture in picture every time. Midi man, my teacher was on the Ed Sullivan show. Wow, at the age seventeen. Let's see. About two years, make an EP now. Uh, hobby only, play piano for around s five years. By the way, I actually did a remake of my entire studio setup. Not only the live streaming video. Let's see, where are we? You guys are there now. Uh, but I actually bought a monitor controller. Let's see, what else? Something else. I remember was there were, oh yeah, a teleprompter, which I even I haven't even connected yet but I should probably do uh, do a like a studio tour or something even though it's, it's not the biggest studio, it's actually tiny but it's it might give you some inspiration for for your own uh, studio setup for the future Uh, Wesley, you're still showing up, showing up like I have to click the show button. Yo, Bennett and the Sparkle Tones. Is that the band? Seven years log the Logic Pro with East West. And composer Cloud X. Achieve one feature film, several short score. Wesley, did you, uh, did you get the new Opus edition yet? Or is that not yet released? I heard something about East West um, releasing a brand new update to their Hollywood uh, line of uh, libraries. I think it was called Opus Edition. So what else do you guys use? I mean, let me just share my, my favorite thing, um, libraries. So I mainly use... Uh, so I sorted all my libraries, as you can see here. Let's see if I go back here. This I can really re recommend you to do this. You create your own user library. So I have ambience, synths, percussion, bass. So I can just load up anything within these subfolders here in Logic. I have a video on my channel somewhere on this to create your own library. But I mean, my favorite strings is probably the... Um, a flatus from Stress of Sampling. Uh, I will get the Cinematic Studio series soon because everyone rants about how amazing it is. 
Uh, Mike, you should chat to Espen Craft. Craft. He might help you in YouTube uses. Let's search for him. Espen Craft. Sixty-two thousand. Whoops. Uh, I hate. Can you just turn off the autoplay here? So he has been. Oh, he has been on YouTube longer than me. Two thousand and six. And he gets, still gets like 5,000, 10,000 views per video here on his news videos. It seems to be more focused on hardware. Is that the, the thing? Do people watch? Because I know one, what's his name? From Italy, Dr. Dr. Mix. He has like, you know, half a million subscribers. And as you can see, he focuses a lot of hardware synthesizers which I don't have and will not be able to get in my tiny studio because I I want to be able to you know walk and move around here still uh, from Norway okay that yeah Espen Kraft I guess the pronunciation is then let's see uh Wesley, not yet. Looking into it, yes, I've heard it. Really prefer East West. So many people um, actually don't like East West because of the play engine, but the Opus Edition is a brand new sample engine, sample library engine. So I think it might be, I hope that will be an improvement. Because when I tried to play back years ago, it was still a bit buggy. Okay, so let's just try playing something and see. This I love about Logic, Logic's library. Okay, so I have moved. Ah, oh, that I hate when you move like your libraries on your drives, and then all this is. You have to redo everything. I want to like get one of these super big SSD drives so I can have all my sample libraries loaded from one drive. But I mean, go into strings and then you just load it up and then you have a key command to open up the interface uh, and then you can just start playing. Where are you? Sustain pedal. There you are. It always gets in the way. Um, I could never figure out the compact play engine. Uh, what's the compact play engine? Or you mean contact? One thing that's tricky about uh, all these string libraries is that it's hard to play because you have that lag because of the attack part of the sound. So that I, I, I was contemplating getting this library. I don't know if you guys have it. Performance samples, what's it called? Area? Area? Something like that. Hello, Ben. It's been a while. I haven't seen you in the forum for a while. Uh, what have you been up to music wise? So, one reason I would like to get one of these, their string libraries, is because you can switch between zero delay or latency, and then once you have recorded it live, which because I record every part live when I make music, I hate writing MIDI notes, I, I don't like that, I, I want to be inspired to play every part. And then you can switch it back, let's see if you can see in the interface, like... I don't know if they have something on it here. Can't see any picture on it. But you can, I think you can, if you go into advanced, set the latency, like from 125 milliseconds to zero, so you get that instant attack. Uh, Wesley, what keyboard controller do you use? Uh, previous, yes, contact play. So contact... I, I, to be honest, I don't like contact. 
I, I don't like it, but I love the sample libraries I have for it, but I don't like the interface. First and foremost, it's tiny. If you can see the screen here, I mean, this is, this is the full library. I sit one meter from the screen and I have retina monitors, so I can hardly see this and I have perfect eyesight, but it's so tiny. I wish every sample library, I should do a rant video on this, by the way. I wish every library was like, let me show you uh, Omnisphere. After the previous Omnisphere uh, update, so this is Omnisphere, but it, does have, it doesn't have a smart dragging, but if you go into Utility, Magnify, put it on 2x, it's, it's taking up the entire screen. Because that's the way I like to have it. I like to see it in front, taking up the entire screen while I work on it. Then press V to just hide it. Or even close it with the key command. Or let's see, let's take another instrument. So, I mean, if a sample library developer or plugin developer are watching this stream, make your interfaces scalable to full screen. Please, please do that. Uh, I mean, I can show you RetroSynth in Logic. Logic is working on this. Let's see if they have added it. Yeah, fully scalable. What, what's so hard about this? Why, can, why can't every plugin developer add that feature? Another one I love is, uh, let's see if I have it here, instruments. Um, what's the drum library called? ToonTrack, Superior Drummer. Uh, Wesley, do you use two? I'm I'm using two du so dual monitor setup, 70, 27 inch, two 27 inch screens with 25, 40 times 1440, I think, some resolution like that. Here we have another one. Look at this, scalable. And it's oh, this one is even scalable both in vertical and horizontal direction. Why? I mean, why can't every developer just do this? Instead, you get uh, you get instead of this full screen, you get let's see, where do you have you get this. This tiny screen, no scalability, not even one time one point five or you know, scaling. Uh so contact is the, is one of the worst of this. Let's see, Mr. Grooveman agree. UVI plugin, same feeling. I have sent uh, UVI this feature request. Let's let's try out UVI. The UVI engine. Let's compare it. Remember this tiny screen size. Uh, in fact, let's just load another track. And let me show you the difference. Okay, where are you? Instrument. Um, I have UVI engine as well. I actually prefer UVI by far, and as you can see, there is actually a huge difference. Where was the other instrument that there? Contact, UVI. Contact is like a quarter, because at least here, let's see, I don't even remember where you where you changed this. If I double click, let's let's do Austrian Grand Hall. Okay, so the, I don't I don't know if this is on the SSD. It will take a bit. My contact expands in Reaper. What? Can you scale it to full screen? Is that a hack? So as you can see, it's this is basically most contact libraries. This is UVI. It doesn't scale here, but I know I have set it at 1.5 somewhere. Where is the settings for this player? Preferences. Yeah, exactly, here. Oh man, they updated to 200%. So this is the UVI engine. Well, who was it? Mr. Grooveman. So you can actually go in here, preferences, and scale it up. And let's try 200%. And now you get like full screen, almost at least, in one... Uh, in the height sense. I don't know if it works on all libraries though. Let's just try another one. Where are we? There we are. So let's try the drone plugin. Stereo. Because I think it works! 
wow, they have they have updated it. They must have listened to me because last time I checked, it was only 150% as max. With 200%, at least on my screen here, uh, it is full screen in height. But when I get the new iMac, which I will buy later this year, I think that is like will be 5K resolution, then 2, 2x will not be enough. But that is one thing that drives me crazy, that the plugin developers don't think about us composers uh, in terms of the user interface. This is actually a really cool plugin, in case you haven't checked it out. Drone effects. It's a bit too loud. Wow, that's a deep bass. By the way, um, some plugins that have this XY um, automation thing, I think you have it in the fat effects in Logic as well. Let's see. If I have it here. So the fat effects have this. What controller do you guys use? Do you use an iPad to, to automate this? Because, I mean, I could have it... Now I have it on two faders, which is not intuitive. Uh, if you have any suggestion, let me know. Let's see. I'm gonna check. Uh, did you see? No, not full screen. About half. Okay, but uh, I mean, many people have resolutions that are, the screen is only full HD, then this will of course look bigger relative to the screen resolution. The higher the, re the resolution, if I have this plugin here, this contact plugin, it's tiny already on this screen. If I buy the new iMac, which will be 5K resolution, then this will be like, like this little inspector window almost like tiny it will make no sense so i'm not sure if they have thought about that by the way uh, those guys who, who who are on a mac uh, have you updated yet to cuz i'm still on mo mojave is that how you pronounce it um let's see this one here 10.14.6 I haven't dared to update to what's the new one, Big Sur, yet. I think I will wait until I get my new uh, Mac for that. Could not find the MIDI channel significations for the MIDI stream. Uh, in in contact, you mean, Wesley? So I... I I never go into the, you know, the nitty gritty of the engine if you're referring to this here. Open up the wrench tool here. I I simply use it like the only thing that's really nice about the native instruments contact library line of products is this one here. The I don't know if you can see it. You see a bit of it if I press here. This MIDI mon MIDI keyboard which is the native instrument's complete control, because you get the light array on each key. So if I load up, for example, let's see, a percussion library, let's close those. You use patches, percussion, big drums. I think I have action strikes on this. So if I load that up, uh, I can see, once it loads up here, let's see, I can see instantly which keys are the hit keys, these are yellow, so you can see these are blue here, you cannot see you on the left side here, but these are, I can instantly see which are mapped, because that is something that I also am annoyed with, that sample library de developers have no standard, like the, you know, if you play a general MIDI standard drum kit, I know which keys are the hi-hats, I know which keys are the bass drum, I know which keys are the snare, the stick hit, everything. But when you try percussion libraries like this one here, then every time you load up a new library of, let's say, a bass drum, percussion, percussion is on C4, 
and then on another library it's on B2. And that drives me crazy. Why, why don't they follow at least some type of standard, like the bass drum, orchestral bass drum, there's no reason that would not be mapped to the standard general MIDI bass drum, which I th think is like B... Is it like B1 and C2? I, I can't... I don't know it in my head, but if I just load up a drum kit, let's see... A standard uh, drum kit like uh, addictive... Let's use... Where are you? Addictive drums too. So if I load up, where are you? If I load this up, and we have the drum kit, let's check the kits here. So if I just check now, where are you? So I uh, I have mapped my MIDI to uh, C4 is middle C. That's the way I prefer it. So C2 and B1 is the kick. So I would think that when you use an orchestral library, you would always map the bass drum, because there is a bass drum in a, an orchestral percussion ensemble, to those keys. Why not? And there are snare drums in, orche in an orchestral setting. Why not map it to, I think it's D2 and E2. And the stick hits here. Why? Why, why, why do they map them to completely independently uh, mappings in every library. Let's see... Uh, ricochet... Uh, dream Machine? Since Dream Machine? I don't remember... Well, what, what's Dream Machine? Uh, Joe, welcome to the stream. So, uh, as you can see from the title, this is my first stream on my new live streaming setup and my first live stream in years. And I'm basically trying things out while just hanging out and chatting with you guys. So let's just let's just compare this now to the other library I just had on screen. Let's close those. So this is the addictive drum. Where did I put the other one? Here. So at least with uh, action strikes, this was one thing I wanted to show you, by the way. So this is not contact. It's actually a contact sample library, but loaded in complete control. That way, I can use my complete control keyboard. This is the only thing, plus the light guide, I really love the complete setup for, the Native Instruments complete setup. I don't really use these knobs here. Can you see them? Here? Oh, oh, I forgot to shift to this screen. Sorry, guys. So this one here. Because uh, in this library, they are, at least they have mapped it to two, two keys. The bass drum, or any drum here, any hit, is the same for each preset. They will always be on, in this case, C3 and D3. Like that. And they, then they will have these flams and rolls on... Uh, the next keys, and then these presets on the other blue keys here. Well, I can see the lights, I don't know if you can. Let's see, do you see my other camera? So I have four different views here at the same time. I will have to check, uh, by the way, after the stream, Wesley, to like go into YouTube settings and approve your user profile or something since you still get that annoying oh, uh, oh approve or disapprove every time you post in the chat so i will not be composing in this stream just a live test and hang out and chat um let's let's do another question by the way what type of music do you guys compose as you can hear and probably know from my earlier videos, I'm more into the soundtrack, cinematic, orchestral music. But I used to actually do more um, electronic music and even electronic music slash rock metal hybrid. I was very into 
old school metal and uh, also some modern melodic metal, symphonic metal. Not really a fan of the most, uh, you know, distorted genres, but I love the ACDC and the Iron Maidens and, you know, all that stuff. But personally, I only really focus on composing instrumental, soundtrack, orchestral and cinematic music. Ricochet in Reason. Yeah, I used to use Reason for many years. Uh, switched to Logic in 2014 and have been standalone only in Logic for the past three years now. I still, I still sometimes use this, I don't know, Anyone have recent rack plugin? That's a really cool plugin, actually. If I just take this, then I can add the recent rack. I should be able to do this. I hope it doesn't break. Um, here, let's see. Recent update. Let's skip that. Let's see if I can add a demolisher. So this is a distortion unit. Let's buy po or let's let's just dirty doubler. This will probably sound like crap, but this is how I sometimes use Reason as this rack plugin. Oh, it sounded crap, so crap! Like, wow. Okay, I just wanted to show you that you can actually use. Oh. Yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> Wesley, orchestral cinema. Did I approve that message? Or was it... I don't remember. Um, if, some, if a director requires it, ready to add hybrid and synth-based quirky themes. Synth-based quirky themes. I'm not sure how I should interpret that. Is that like... Quir when I hear quirky, I think like comedy or like animation. Is that what you're talking about? Having to go soon, yeah. Okay, so it, it's just a live hangout, my first live stream on my new setup. I appreciate having you here, Wesley, and everyone else. We cannot hear the audio. Cannot hear the audio. Let's see, what's wrong? What's wrong? Uh, if I... Why can't you hear the audio anymore? It should be sending out to... Let's see, now. Uh, uh, all right, so why? Why doesn't... Why do I have to have it on? Okay, let's, let's just... Let's just remove this. Bye, boss. Multi genre, mainly hip hop from Ricochet. Nice. I have uh, I have not done hip hop. I have done some like beats type of music, uh, especially in my early days of YouTube. Actually, I did some uh, cinematic. No music. Uh, let's see. But can you hear it now again, Miniman? I think it was just because of this insert effect. Probably it could be my latency mode here as well. Uh, Ricochet, that's how long I've been a fan of yours. Oh, since my early, like, I even did some... Is this a thing on YouTube still? When I started out beat-making videos, is that a thing? I, I mean, you're, you have composed a tune, either you do it live or just, uh, like... On playback, you like sync up what you do. That's some stuff I did in my early days on YouTube. No sound for me either. Hello, hello. Still no? Audio follow video. Did I press something crazy here? Let me know if you can now hear it now. I just hear you hitting. Why? Why? I, I have to check the live streaming output uh, audio. So I can actually see it in the actual live streaming 
set up what is going out and it's turn on. Let me try the other plugin. Okay, let's let's close that and go back so I can see you guys. No software sounds. Why? Why are why isn't it work? Oh, the, the drums are back. I don't even know what happened. Because I can I can see it in my live output, my microphone. Let's see. I should probably lower my microphone. I see it's very on the in the reds. Um Let's see if I can just lower it on here. The gain, I have my analog mixer over here. Can hear drums low sound. Let me increase the volume. It's really tricky to get the Okay, now very low. Sounds like he headphone leakage. Still, is it still low? If you compare that volume, is it still low compared to my voice? Sorry about that. Had to, had to hit those cymbal crashes. Sounds acceptable. Uh, let's see. Let's let's close that track for now. I think I can. Pretty good now. Yeah, it sounds. It was always showing for me on the output, so it must have been like YouTube Live something glitching. Because I can see the output, it's, it should be, it's almost red. Okay, so I will, I will have to really be careful on that in the future, especially when I do live sound design, composing streams. Um, because it's easy to set the microphone level, because that's pretty constant. But the music might be low sometimes. So let's see, if I have this at the 12 o'clock, then it's a bit too low. So I have to have it like on 2 o'clock. This is my monitor controller, by the way. If anyone is wondering, I actually have my audio interface. Can you see where I'm pointing? Um, no, you cannot. Let's see which camera. My audio interface over here. And then I have sending that out to this monitor controller here, which goes to my monitor studio uh, speakers, but they also go into my live streaming hardware box. And then I just switch so I don't hear the monitors. So this sends the audio from the iMac to the live streaming unit. That's, that's the setup for the audio. Oh, bye, uh, Wesley. Hope to see you next time or anytime soon again. Have you a limiter on the output bus? Yes, I do. Uh, the, the great thing about this uh, live streaming setup, you cannot, okay, so let me bring it on screen. This is the live streaming hardware um, setup. So it's a software controlling the hardware unit. So you can see my voice level here. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Almost hitting red here. One, two, the, so that's low now. As you can see, it's too low, so I need to boost that. And then I actually have here on the master, no EQ, but let's see, a limiter and a compressor on the master. Let me move that to the next other screen again, like that. And this is why I need a third screen, because now I need to close that screen and see you guys again here and let's lo open logic again hello mauro mauro monti sounds are you from italy we have we had one person from italy here at least earlier i will buy the silicon m2 or whatever it will call iMac, either imac or mac mini depending on how good that the next mac mini will be um but I'm I'm waiting for the M2 
or M M one X or whatever it's called because I've I've checked some benchmarks that leaked and it will be pretty insane uh, performance wise because I would I would like to have the Mac Pro with an Apple CPU but I guess that will come one and a half years from now or so so I cannot wait that long my computer is in dire need of an upgrade to be honest hey javier great to see you live streaming yeah <laughs> yeah first live stream it's a, just a test and hang out and chat but actually it's nice to have some fun and connect with you guys on stream so in the future i will be for s certain making um, like live composing and sound design streams I have been inspired by Alex Mukala um, and also another Alex Pfeffer from Germany um, and uh, what's his name? Dirk El Elert. Those three composer YouTubers and of course the, the good old Daniel James who was like a pioneer in the composer live streaming space I guess. Uh, Dipanshu, any plugin suggestion for those ambient synth arpeggios? Ambient synth arpeggios. So, for arpeggios, I, I of, most often I use Omnisphere, to be honest. I'm not sure what you mean by ambient arpeggios. So, I would just go for the arpeggiator and then put lots of. Um, let's just load up a plug sound in Omnisphere. Uh, so, percussive organic, no. Let's do, do a short, scene short. Let's try this one. And then use lots of reverb and uh, uh, delay. Let's see. And then just put that on slower setting. I don't know. Probably all of them like so. Okay, so it's too, very slow now. Probably a bit too much, much reverb, to be honest. Um, what is your audio interface? Oh, yeah, that's an old one. Um, the reason I, li I use it still is because I really like the interface of it. It has huge knobs for the mic um, or the headphone output. Uh, it has buttons to switch. It's called Propeller Head Balance. So it was made by the same company that did the DAW I used to use, which was Reason. And they like discontinued it like eight years ago, but I still use it. So, El Mauro, uh, hi Mike, do you know another choice for BBC2 tech control? I don't think there is another choice other than the high end, what's it called, Horner or something, which is like almost a thousand dollars. So, for for a breath controller, it's by the way, if you guys don't know it, it looks like this. Can you see it on the tiny screen? If I just bring this up again. It looks like this. You hang it around your neck and then you blow into this uh, piece here, almost like blowing air into a flute or a trumpet. And then you load up the sample library and then you can control the dynamics of it, like, like blowing air. And the harder you push air into it, uh, the more, the higher the dynamics will be. So that is a breath controller. Let's go back to that. I'm starting to get used to this live streaming setup now. It's a bit too much to keep track of with three screens, a live streaming unit, the camera there, monitor there, and the camera monitor there. But I think... Um, for my first try, it at least it's not catastrophic, in my opinion. I hope you agree. <laughs> Hello, John, and another John. Two Johns. Um, I don't know Spanish, John Pius. I think that's Spanish or Portuguese. If you can write in English instead, uh, please. Have you looked or considered using live loops or the new... So live loops, I, I tried it a bit, never really 
never really got into it. I, I don't know if it's, it's more for music producers compared to music composers, in my opinion. Like, if you compose music in the traditional way, it's not... I don't find a good workflow for it. If you have any suggestions or try it yourself, um, let me know in the comments. The step sequencer, um, I think it's the same thing. I actually perform, as in play, let's see if you can see me here, Every even even the percussion parts. So I mean, I go in and so I play this manually when I when I compose music. Oh, it's okay, John. Spanish. Yeah, I uh, I only know Swedish and English, and I assume none of you guys know Swedish. In your Logix Pro tutorial video, you post one video about saving sound. Uh, it's not working. Yeah, I, I, I think I have. Yeah, I have a video on it. It should be working still. I'm on ten point four point six, I think, and it's still working for me. So I'm not sure why it's not working. I, I mean, if you follow step by step the tutorial, it should uh, be working. That's what I'm using still. I mean, you can see here. If I open up the library, go to user patches, I create it all these subfolders or folders with subfolders and then I can load another library here double click it takes a while because well this is why I need like those new SSD drives should be so much faster unless it's broken now it's it looks like it's broken I broke it I think this is the reason rack plugin every time I like close the recent rack plugin it kills logic for me so i need to either update it i think it needs to be updated how do you say hello in swedish well we say hey that's hello in swedish uh, i bought the swam virtual instruments and same breath about the swam stuff can't read media input from my breath control that's strange this is great. I'm working my way through online course of composing epic music. Great stuff. Hey, oh, hello, Peter. New on the stream, I think. So I think I have to actually force quit logic now. If I, do anyone use the recent rack plugin and have this problem? It's the only plugin I have that makes logic freeze up like that. Hello. Uh, oh, John. Um, Live loops for sketching, trying out ideas. Yeah, I I think I even mentioned that in my video on the new update. And I thought I would be using that, but I haven't yet. Like, but want to keep up as a backup. So have you been using it in that way? Or is that just some suggestions that you thought about? Uh So, right, I get thousands of people wanting technical tutorials and, and help personally. I don't do that at all. I, I even don't even open my private messages any, any, anymore because people just want my help. So, sorry, you have to do the tutorial and you can post in the Facebook group for Logic if, if you want to get help. I think yeah, that's the best way. I can post the Logic group, by the way. If K Anyone that has technical questions... Personal technical questions, please please go to the Logic Pro X for professional Facebook group. There. So, like that. Uh, Dimas, thanks. Thanks for what? My videos? Uh, well, I'm glad you enjoyed it anyway. Did my link work, by the way? So that's the Facebook group. Uh, you can go to post question anything about Logic and and stuff in there. Anyway, I think that will be it for this stream, my friends. It was really nice hanging out, trying this out. I got uh, to most 30 concur concurrent viewers, a great chat with lots of fun stuff going on. Uh, and I hope I will see you guys soon again. I don't know how to end it. End stream. 
So see you guys in the next video or live stream.